Hey guys, welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today I have a collaboration for you that I have been dying to post since October started. As you can see, you are sport for choice on some fantastic tutorials to check out. I was lucky enough to collab with these incredible artists and the looks everyone came up with are phenomenal. Our theme was of course the series and world of Zelda and we each came up with different characters that we wanted to emulate. The other stunning artists in this collaboration are Nikhil Genesis, The Bethany Faye, I Wanted to See One Video, Minsuki, Jackie O, and Abicus. I will have links to all of their channels down below as well as at the end of this video. My contribution to this theme was to recreate Majora's Mask. I hope you like our looks and enjoy! All right, as you can imagine, this one has a good few steps to it. So to start off, I needed to slick back my hair and apply a bald cap. This is just one that I had made and I secured it down with Prosade. I also went over my brows and along the seam lines with the Prosade to blend it in. And then I just made sure to set that with a translucent powder. Definitely a look where it helps to have some reference pictures nearby while creating it. I of course did the thing I always do and created an outline for myself in a white eyeliner pencil just to rough out where everything will go. And then the easiest way I found to start creating this is to just block out the biggest areas with their base colors. So I took a water activated red face paint from Wolf and started filling in all the red areas around the center of the face. This was a good one to start with as well because as you move you'll be able to tell if you are maintaining relative symmetry across the face or if you need to adjust. And then I followed that with the yellow wolf face paint and started basing out the eye shapes. Again, a really good one to do early on because it will let you know if your mask is sitting in the right area on your face and you can rough out where the green pupils will be going later. When I was fairly comfortable with that placement, I just went ahead and filled in the bottom of the mask with all of the red. And then taking the red and yellow face paints and mixing them together, I created an orange that I used to do some of the detailings along the top of the mask. For the purple blue areas of the face, I started with a very light lavender face paint, not at all the color that the mask is, but this one is nice because it gives a good base color for the purple, as well as allows me to draw on top of later when I start doing all the details and I can go back and darken near the end. Where the gold detailing sits on the bottom of the mask, I started by just using a white face paint and mapping out that area. It might turn pink for the first few lines since it will mix with the red, but then you can just go over as it dries and build up the layers of white. You can also use the red to fix any areas if you want to correct the angles on the line work. And then taking a black water activated paint on a very fine detail brush. This is one that I actually just bought off of eBay in a lot since it was super, super tiny. I started going around all of the edges where the black outlining is. This is definitely a part that takes a little bit of concentration. It can be a little bit daunting since it is black and messing up is never fun. But you can see I kind of use sketch marks as I create and just build up from there. So move with as much confidence as you have or as much false confidence as you need. And you can lay down and build up the lines and refine them as you go. This is also a good step to refine any of the shapes that maybe weren't perfected when you base them out in their original colors. For instance, I was able to make the shapes around the eyes much more of that teardrop look as opposed to just a straight triangle, which they originally were. And then I also took this time to add the dotting detailing that goes up and down the face. I then just made them a little bit larger with a bigger brush since it's a lot easier to create circles by just pressing down a brush as opposed to actually making the circle shape. And then you can see here one of the advantages to having the light purple is you can go back over with your white and redefine. And then I went over the detailing along the eyebrow area with the same yellow that I used for the eyes. The cheeks have some of their own detailing, much like the bottom of the face. So I again took my white water activated paint and just sketched those in. And then I went back over the forehead area that I just sketched out with the white pencil and better define the lines. When I was happy with how those were looking, I went ahead and wanted to finish up the orange areas. So I took a bit of the orange paint and mixed it a little bit darker and brushed that in and then better blended it fully with a orange eyeshadow to just kind of give it a bit of a gradient. 
the forehead detailing was definitely one of the hardest parts since it is so fine but you can see i tend to just move really slowly in areas that are this detailed i also get ridiculously close to my mirror and just build up from there and then for the eyes i went in with three different eyeshadows in a red orange and yellow and made the gradient that exists on them and kind of just blended it inwards I started with the outside with the red, blend it into the orange, and then where I wanted the yellow to sit, I did put down a bit of a white cream base so it would pop even more, but still left a center area alone for where the green irises will be later on. With that same red shadow and a black eyeshadow, I then started creating a lot more definition along the red areas. I thought it looked way too plain with just the red, so I decided to add different shadowing, especially around the eye area, along the bottom of the jaw, and just kind of blended it inwards to make it look a little bit more roughed up and textured. You can also see here how whenever I was near the sides of the mask, I totally took advantage of the fact that I was going to be going over the entire edges with black face paint. So I would just completely color outside the lines and not care at all about it. Then I moved on to start making the purple areas of the mask much darker and richer, far closer to what they actually should be on the mask. For this, I used a deep purple blue eyeshadow from Sugar Pill, and I just blended this all in. Again, kind of liking the slightly splotchy look to it, just because it gave it a little bit more texture instead of just being a flat color. I changed out between larger fluffy brushes and small detail ones, depending on where I was working on the mask. And then I also took a cobalt blue shadow and incorporated this into the coloring as well to create a bit more depth and a little bit more of a blue reflect. I went back over the line work that I had done before I did the purple and blue. The outline was still there, so it was really easy to follow. And then I added some highlighting to the dotting and the forehead detailing. With the black face paint again, I just finished up the forehead area where the lines on the mask go. This I kind of made up a little bit because where the horns actually sit, it sits in the middle of them. So I had to kind of place the lines where I thought they would look best. And of course, totally abuse the going outside the lines rule. With a green aqua face paint, this one is from Crivoline, I then started creating the eye shapes, going over with black to create the pupils, and then outlining them with a super fine brush and doing a little bit of detailing by pulling the black inwards. I do recommend whenever you paint eyes on your own eyelids to take a picture face on in your camera or your phone, and then you can see which way the eyes are facing. Because I had left all those areas that are supposed to be gold white, I went back with a gold face paint and just went over that. Now the gold was able to pop since it is on top of white instead of color, so it will show up a little bit better. And a step I thought helped bring the mask to life even a little bit more was to add some white highlighting along different areas of the mask where light would reflect off of it. And then I finally got to outline the mask with the black wool face paint and fill in everywhere else around there. I do fill in my shoulders at the very end, but I kind of just left it for now to do the last little bit of detailing. At this point, I realized I had forgotten that the cheeks actually have more color on them than just blue. So I went ahead and put some white shadow down and then followed with a lime green shadow and a turquoise shadow just to make sure I got the right coloring of the mask. The spikes I made out of Model Magic since it is one of the easiest materials to work with and super lightweight. And then I colored them with face paint as well and attached them with prosade adhesive. Threw on the last little spikes on the forehead and then that is it for my Majora's Mask makeup look. I definitely hope you guys enjoy. Please check out the other videos in this collaboration. They are fantastic. If you like this video, I would love if you would please share and subscribe. You know it means the world to me and makes a load of difference. But until next video, I of course will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching and until then, bye guys.